if you are ready for change. But understand, you know, change doesn't come easy. The status quo resists change. Not just Republicans, Democrats get comfortable. They start kind of feeling like, oh, okay, well this is how things work. And so when we started this campaign, nobody gave us much of a chance. They said, well, you know, he'll never be able to raise the money. They didn't realize there's this thing called the internet. And we have built a grassroots fundraising network that people have never seen before. We got 170,000 new donors just this month. $25, $5, $10. So then they said, well, you know what, he's never going to get any of the institutional support and all the endorsements, that's what you need to run a presidential campaign. But they didn't understand that we are building from the grassroots, we have a different model. We got precinct captains, we got <laughs> folks who are energized and invigorated, and we have built the best political organization in this campaign, in this country right now, from the bottom up. And so they said, well, well, all right, maybe, maybe you've built the organization, maybe you've raised the money. And I know Obama talks pretty good, you like his policy positions, but, but, it would be a roll of the dice to elect him because he has not been in Washington long enough. And we need to, we need to season and stew him a little bit more. Pledge of Allegiance. And, you know, there are folks who are arguing, well, he, you know, is a follower of Ronald Reagan. And, and despite this week them saying, well, he's too liberal because he's got a liberal voting record. He's, he's a little too black. Well, maybe he's not black enough. There, there are all sorts of reasons being offered by the purveyors of the status quo as to why we can't bring about change. But ultimately, it all comes down to you. It comes down to whether or not you believe it. You know, let me just, let me just describe, after Iowa, I think there were a lot of people who were just giddy. You know, the, you know we had won a great victory, and you know, all these nice write-ups, and you know, I was on the cover of Newsweek Pretty Picture, and everybody was just excited. And, and then we lost in New Hampshire. And suddenly people were like, oh, I guess this isn't as easy as we thought. See, pe people, people thought that, you know, you just, you win one election and suddenly the status quo gives in and, you know, elect Barack and, you know, immediately we'll have racial re reconciliation and poverty will be over. And, you know, nobody will argue anymore about it. Your teenage children will, will listen to you. <laughs> and so it was useful for us to recognize that this isn't easy. You know, I've been talking about change since the beginning of this campaign. I talked about change when we were up. I talked about it when we were down. And now, this change thing must be really catching on, because I noticed everybody's talking about change. 
You know, Mick Romney's got change on his side. So. You know, George Bush, for all I know, he's for change. But, but see, we're not interested in change as a slogan. We want change that we can believe in, and that has to be earned. That has to be earned. That requires hard work. It requires that we come together, that we overcome real differences, that we're willing to disagree without being disagreeable, that we're willing, willing to listen to each other, that we're willing to try new things that get us out of our comfort zone. And it requires hope. You know, I talk about hope a lot in this campaign. I've got hope on my signs. I gave a speech at the Democratic National Convention about hope, and I wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope. But I noticed that lately I've been getting criticized by my opponent uh, for talking about hope, as if, oh, oh, he's so naive. He's so idealistic. He's, he's a hope monger. <laughs> The implication is that somehow, if you talk about hope, you know, you, you must be engaging in wishful thinking. Your, your head must be in the clouds. You must want to shirk from a fight and, and not have a realistic view of the world. But you know what? That's not what hope is. Hope is not blind optimism. Hope is not ignoring the challenges that are before you, the roadblocks that stand between you and your dreams. Hope's just the opposite. The reason I talk about hope is because it's very unlikely that I would be standing here today. You know, my father left when I was two. I was raised by a single mom and my grandparents. And my mom had to work and go to school and raise her kids. And there were some times when we were on food stamps and, you know, what I, I, they gave me love, they gave me an education, and they gave me hope. And so, and so I know, I know how hard it's going to be to provide health care for all Americans. The drug and the insurance companies aren't going to give up their profits easily. I know it will be hard to create an energy policy that makes sense in this country. ExxonMobil made $11 billion this quarter. That buys a lot of lobbyists. I know it won't be hard, it, it, it won't be easy to alleviate poverty. It's been built up over centuries. I know it won't be easy to lift up our schools because all of us are going to have responsibilities. It's not just up to the teachers, it's going to be up to the parents. It's going to be up to our community to instill a love of learning, as well as putting the money in to make sure that every kid has the opportunities they need. I know because I have fought on the streets as a community organizer. I have fought in the courts as a civil rights attorney representing those who've been denied opportunity on the job or denied access to the polling place. I have fought in the legislature and I've gotten some great bills passed but I've lost a lot of good ones too because good intentions were not enough. They weren't fortified with political power and political will. I have seen how easily this country can be misled, how our judgment can be clouded by fear. Not just fear of terrorism, but fear of immigrants, and fear of people who don't look like us, fear of people of different faiths.